Hey Dude, the 90s call with Christine Taylor and David Lasher. Hey everybody, welcome back to Hey Dude, the 90s called podcast. I'm David Lasher. Hi, David. I'm Christine Taylor. Oh yeah, I forgot you wanted to do one name. I'm going to go one name. I'm going to feel casual with our fans at this point. It's Christina David. I forgot. I'm sorry. Yes, I'm David, (laughs) and that's Christine. (laughs) We're 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 friends at this point with all our listeners. Hopefully, (laughs) how great was Jason Priestley last week? Oh, I listened back to it yesterday and it was so good. I, you know how when it's happening in real time, it's sort of, and also we, we get to see him. So I'm, you know, looking at his face and he's talking and it's just so funny. I looked so sort of gobsmacked the entire time. Uh, were you I'm just nodding and like wide eyed smiles. Just, I, I really was laughing uh, at the, on the, on our little social media clip of my um, face, but listening back. He, he's such a treat. Like, oh my gosh, what a fun dude. What a cool dude. I love his attitude. Um, I, I just thought it was so awesome. I, You know, on, when we started the interview, my one note was I needed to ask him what it was like to uh, have, have uh, acquired that sort of recognizability and fame that quickly because you rarely see that. And I loved his answer that like, he just stayed home a lot. Oh, it's so, so great. <laughs> yeah. He just like <laughs> isolated. And he talked about the work really. I mean, that has it, how he directed the show. He was became a producer on the show and he was working, you know, all day like there were he was in a bubble. Yes. And and really didn't see what was going on around him. But we all saw what was going on with him and, and the cast. Um like do you and Ben get stopped all the time? I mean, is it a problem for you guys? No, not all the time. I mean, honestly, Ben is the more recognizable. Like Ben is stopped all the time. I think because of the roles he's played, people come up to him and they feel like they know him. And he's sort of like right. the yeah. everyman, like, hey, buddy, you know, yes. And and, and um, so he he handles it so well. I can really fly under the radar. I mean, so that that's that's yeah, nice. But Every two, now when, and again. Whenever there's two, uh, a couple that are both recognizable together – could cause a stir, you know? Yeah, it, but it's not a stir. It's a, it's a, right. it's a, mi- a mild, maybe, you know, whisper, a <laughs> mild, like, ooh. That's no, actually, no. that's the perfect <laughs> thing. Like, you can actually, you know, make somebody smile once in a while by taking a selfie, but you're not like uh, bombarded, right? Exactly. And they're, it's, they're always such nice fans. And, um, but we have a great guest today who I'm sure gets recognized nonstop. For She's her. really such a, a beautiful person inside and out. I've known her for so many years. Um, I've known I know her husband for many, many years and, and their family. I know Elizabeth also and did an episode of Saved by the Bell back in the day. And she was <laughs> and met her before the Saved by the Bell, which I want to talk about with her. But um and and we have a a lot of um her of Greg's uh art work from over the no years. No way. Yes. You really? You collect Greg's yes. art? We have a lot of his art because my really, cl- uh, we'll, we'll talk to her about it when, when, <laughs> when we talk to her about it. But yes, my, my uh, oldest friend, Jana was close with him. And when she, you know, she knew him well and she would, she had all these cool pieces that she, that I, anyway, it's, we've got some really cool stuff of Greg's that is yeah, still up. He, and I think of her all the time when I, when I see it really cool stuff. He, yeah, he's incredibly talented. The two of them are a beautiful couple. Um, but he pivoted to like fashion design. You know, exactly. You know, his father is Jerry Lauren, Ralph Lauren's uh, brother, and he took his uh, his. From what I understand, he took his um, passion for art and put it into fashion design, and like he designs incredible clothing. Um, and he's in, you know, he's in. I don't know, all, you know, sacks and all yeah. these different yeah, the stores, high but... end places. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I think Elizabeth is here. Let's welcome Elizabeth Berkeley. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Oh. Hi. Yay, yay. Hi, Hi. here. <laughs> Two people I love. So happy to see you. We love you too. It's so good to see hey, you. Come on. Come on. This is like 
Why did it take this long to get us together, right? Oh, my gosh. Yeah, Liz, it's been a while, right? We used to have dinner every time Dylan came out and then Definitely. COVID I mean, happened. Really, exactly, exactly. Oh, my God. I'm so happy to see you guys. So good to see and you. Congrats, congrats on this. Like, this is so exciting. You guys coming together, creating this, and and then, like, letting – you're going to have, like, reunions every week, right? We're trying – I mean, we had a couple good reunions, and now we have all these great friends and, and people that we've been interviewing, but we do really want to bring the reunions because there's nothing like – watch it, listening, watching everybody sort of reconnect. Yeah. Um, you know, obviously people have seen each other over the years in and out, but like getting everyone together um, for the couple of the reunions that we did. We did one for the Brady Bunch movie cast. You um, did? Yeah. That's okay, which that's was great. And David, uh, David's White Squall cast came on and that was super cool. So we and, will. And I mean, you're having your own individual, like this right now with us is like, I mean, I think of you a lot. I DM, I DM or, or always, you know, uh, <laughs> but, and I wish you well and love from afar, but I, I just love, like, this is our own little mini reunion. So I love oh, it. Oh, I'm so happy. Elizabeth, do you remember, the, uh, you probably don't remember because I did save by the bell, like one of my first jobs oh, yes. in LA, but I met you before that, like right before I was moving to LA at Kelly Martin's 16th birthday party. It was I in Brentwood, and it was all of these girls from. Yes, I actually do, and I would die to see pictures from that. I got to find them because it was at like the California Pizza Kitchen, and I had just, you know, I'd never, I think I'd been to LA once or something like that, and was oh I, Kelly had invited me. David, I met Kelly at the opening of um, the Nickelodeon Studios, and they had all of these fun people down there, and Kelly and I got really friendly during that weekend. And then she invited me to this birthday party and I happened to be in LA and you were so loving and gracious and you gave me your number and you were like, as soon as you get to LA, reach out. And I did and ended up on the show. And you just oh have God. always been such a sweetheart, like just the warmest human being. Every time we've run into each other over the years, it's like no time has passed. No, I, I, <laughs> And by the way, I have no idea if we've started or not. We're just having our conversation. Are you, we're, we're doing it. Yes, yes okay. and I, I agree with it's everything like, Christine said. action. <laughs> and action. This is but, it, man. This is it. We're, we're speaking the truth. Uh, and, well, thank you. First of all, that is the sweetest because I have felt that way about you. And specifically, you know, you and I, there, there was a whole host of girls during the time where we were coming up together where, and David, you probably experienced this too, where there were people who grew up here and had already had their momentum, right? And then like you and and for myself, I came from Michigan as right. far from all this, you know, as you could even dream of. Um, I mean, to people I grew up with, it seemed far-fetched and impossible, but for yeah. me, I held this clear vision like like you guys. So coming here and being the new, it felt like the new girl in school. I do remember meeting you at that party. And I I had probably myself just been kind of brand new here. I was commuting back and forth for three years before I moved here. Mm -hmm. Oh, my um, gosh. From Michigan? Yes. And at oh, that wow. time, guys, like there was no Zoom audition. I was making like VHS tape or beta. <laughs> oh, my God. Like hard um, copies that were I, being sent. Right? Oh, yeah. Or flying Northwest on my own. And then I had these great acting teachers that maybe, did you guys coach with Diane Harden and Nora Eckstein at Young Actors Space? No. no. no? Okay. That was kind of the place. And Kelly and I were managed by those two incredible women. And that's how I. That was the connection there. Oh, wow. Exactly. exactly. And um, so, you know, being from somewhere else in, in search of the dream. And pursuing that and trying to find community because we were all either being tutored or regular school or a hybrid of the two. Right. Um, but we, you know, we were a unique breed at that time doing it all on set. And, you know, the, my parents made me go to regular school, but um, as well, which I'm grateful for. But I, I think we kind of found our people at a young age, really just to say, oh my gosh, we're going through this and navigating this together. And I'm sure you had your, your pack of guys, right. That you were navigating that with. Yeah. I mean, you sent a photo of yourself and I with Steven Dorff. 
I don't oh know when that was Man, on some I'm trip. Hold on, it, it brought yeah. me right back there. I was like, whoa. I know, David, because we did, and maybe Christine, maybe you did as well. We did. It was like a teen beat San Diego trip. Right. It was. Yeah, I remember it was a trip <laughs> somewhere. <laughs> and what, it was for Teen Beat. It was Teen Beat magazine. Like was a Teen Beat magazine um. in the nineties posted these celebrity trips um, <laughs> that, like, honestly, when I was in Michigan, I would read about and go, "Oh my god, one day I'll go on one of those," which is so <laughs> crazy. Like as if that was some ultimate thing. <laughs> right. But every, remember, every kid did. Yeah, I remember being on this trip. We 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 had um, not not mentors. What is it? Chaperones. Okay, which now I'm sure we've all been chaperones for our own our own kids. Trips, <laughs> exactly. Like trips. Um, but we had these chaperones. Did they really watch us? I don't know. But um, luckily, we didn't get into trouble. But it it felt like we were making it somehow because then you were in Teen Beat, and it felt like okay. The this yeah you know <laughs> I'm out there I'm and out it, there it, it's su- there's such an innocence because if you think about like the kids growing up now with social media and all of that it was so controlled and so um I it, we it was an insular world and we were protected in a certain way in a certain way and certain ways exposed to things too soon as well you know there was that duality which is so interesting where I think kids now, you know, controlling their branding and their, and their image and their, all of that. We didn't have that. And there was something actually really sweet and old fashioned about being able to just explore and grow up. Yes. In the public eye, but then also really protected, you know, in our cases by our parents or whomever, you know, on set, like in our case on Saved by the Bell, which I don't want to get too ahead of things, but you know, we, we, we did have a pack of kids. We were minors and we had parents around. Right. So we were actually lucky. I mean, you know, because you're on set with us. Right. And you could go <laughs> home and turn it off. Whereas, you know, a YouTuber or a TikTok influencer, it, it's, it's never over. Right. Your whole, your whole life is, you know, what, what, what can I post? What can I film? It, it never ends for them. Exactly. And, and, tr- and true for, I mean, my, my son is 10, so he's too young and I will not be giving it, letting him have access. Oh my God. Sky's 10 years old. Can That's you believe it? Wow. Crazy. I know. <laughs> and, and your, your babies are, I know, I, I don't. I feel like we were, we were t- reaching out, not like it felt like a minute ago where you were reaching out about babysitters Pregnancy. and nannies and you're like, yes. I'm, I need to figure this out. And what did yes. you do? And how did, yes, yes. yes. Well, LOL. Oh you. my gosh. No. And th- th- that generosity of spirit. Thank you. That like at different um, moments and, and, you know, those, those rites of passages of, you know, being a professional actress and then becoming a mom and then a, mo- a working mom. And then all of those things, you were someone that I could just reach out to and feel that connection, no matter how many years had gone by, like always wishing each other well. And then knowing that we could, we could just pick up wherever and say, Hey, I'm in this new life moment. I need, I need your help. Can you guide me? Because we haven't been here before. Right. And and there's nothing that I think, you know, moms or parents want to do more than in part. (laughs) you know, just feel like, okay, I can pass something on because I made so many mistakes and I don't want that <laughs> the next right. person to make the same mistakes that I made. And we all just, and then it's just a, you know, it's, um, you, you, you it just, a, yes, you pay it forward. The gift yeah. that keeps giving. It is. It, re- it really is. It, it, I mean, I have fr- people now who, again, I don't have all the answers, right? But it, it is a unique, specific thing. Um, also being in the industry to be able to, you know, and I guess in any workforce where where especially a woman in that moment finds themselves they they need to turn to someone who has been through it and is a little bit ahead on that path on that journey to say okay this is what worked what worked what didn't and why this is my specific journey here's what i i can impart and then you know that wisdom you take you take what works for you take right? it or leave it exactly, exactly. <laughs> yeah yeah so i appre- i appreciate you cuz yeah reaching out at that time especially it's more vulnerable right so much so yeah. it, you you are it you feel lost <laughs> i, I yeah. think you just start <laughs> you read everything and just i mean i remember reading some book the after when ella was a week old she's going to be 21 next week so Come on. but I, I yes yes but i remember thinking 
I just was sobbing. And also I hadn't left the house. I was like, right. I, I think I might've showered twice in that first week. Cause I didn't want to leave her. I wanted to just take pictures, yes, but I remember yes. sobbing saying I've ruined it all. Oh. I've already <laughs> messed her up because she's not sleeping and she's not this. And I'm just On nursing. Her. <laughs> or, yeah. And then you find your own rhythm, right? Yes. And she's doing fine. She maybe slept in the bed with us a little too long. She maybe had a bottle for too long. Guess what? She's okay now. And exactly. I want to just say to moms and parents, it, you got to, you, you do you, right? Exactly. What works for the rhythm of your family and, yes. and each family has that. And David, I know you're a great daddy. So I know you're so present and you've from day one, you've just, you know, you're so committed and devoted and he's such a good dad. So <laughs> he's such a good well, I, dad. I honestly enjoy I, Like there's nothing I'd rather do than be, uh, you know, at my kids' basketball game or on a beach with them or, you know, it, that's, that's what I look forward to in life. And I, I stop and I take, uh, you know, like a, a mental photo in my head, like everyone's healthy, everyone's yeah. together. And, and I, I try and be present and like really take it in. I'm not surprised you guys are friends because you really are like sort of kindred spirits and both such sweet, like beautiful souls. And I, I'm not surprised that you guys have connected like that. Yeah. No, my only I'm not going to say regret because we have we have uh, more time here. Thank God in life. <laughs> um, but I, it's not getting to spend enough time with you. So at some point, Chris, we're going to have to just make that happen. Um, yes. You know, yes. I know everybody's families and lives and busyness and all of that but I would love to just sit across from you at a, not just on zoom but I'll meet <laughs> yes. you and have a cup of tea yeah. have some lunch and yes like go deep and I, I would love that I would really love that I would too we will do it we will okay. so wait let's go back to you were <laughs> oh, yeah. from Michigan and you were flying back and yes. forth for auditions and then your family moved to LA you how did yes, that so how did that happen what happened is um so guys when I was nine <laughs> I wrote a letter to Norman Lear who you know is is the, the legendary producer of all probably in the eighties right the most from the Jeffersons to the all the family yeah. oh my goodness yeah. yeah I wrote him a letter when I was not let me just back up that I always knew I wanted to do this okay this yeah. was not a we all know kids whose parents kind of pushed them into it or lived vicariously through their children this was just it was a calling I had it was a passion I had and my parents. Luckily, without any showbiz connections of any kind, took it seriously. And they, it was really like I started with dance class and dance. I lived it. I breathed it. It was, I mean, it still is, is one of the great loves of my life. Um, but I was very serious about it. I did like 17 dance lessons a week growing up. And then wow. I did theater and then commercials and modeling um, and started going to work with elite when I was about 12, but very overprotective parents. Okay. Mm -hmm. Like they sent me off to the models apartments alone at 12 or Paris or something. They were always, my mom was always with me. And right. um, so we, I was doing as much as you could in Michigan, which is very limited. Right. <laughs> I mean, but, um, but I did get my SAG card doing commercials and I really, my mom knew and my dad knew that the minute I graduated, I'd be out the door and, and off to Hollywood, but they let me start working young, which was actually a gift. And I think because I was in Michigan, it was in doses. It wasn't all, you know, in terms of like, I wasn't working on sets nonstop from the age of nine, right? It, it, it was gradual and, mm -hmm. and that felt organic and not as scary maybe to them. And you were always um, in a regular school. In Michigan yeah. and LA. Yeah. yeah, always, always. Yeah. Smart. Um, which I think was an, an, there was something good about it to have that normalcy. Yeah. And, um, but then when I was nine, I wrote this letter to Norman Lear and told him that he should make me a star. And <laughs> here's why. And um, I actually got a letter back when I, uh, uh, probably a few months later, I got a, a letter back from Mark Hirschfield, who worked for him at the time, mm -hmm. who's one of the biggest casting people. You guys probably know him. <laughs> right. And he said, you know, thank you so much. We we don't need to look for talent outside of Hollywood. But if you should ever find yourself here, please don't hesitate. I have the letter. OK. Wow. And 
So my parents, two years late, no, three years later, when I was 12, we came for a family vacation. My uncle lived here, not in the business again. Um, and I was still pursuing all these other avenues of work, a lot of theater. Um, and then we, we called, we called and, and my mom helped me, you know, find the number obviously and said, we're, we're here. I don't know if you remember this. And he actually remembered it, had me come in. I brought a boom box guys. Okay. I mean, I don't know <laughs> an old school. How to boom explain box. This and I pressed play and sang somewhere over the rainbow for him. And he was like, okay, I'm setting up some meetings with agents. And that's when I got my agent who I was with till I, Judy Savage. Were you guys with Judy Savage? No, I remember her. No, but I remember. Yes. Okay. Because there were just a few. Iris Burton, Judy Savage. Harry <laughs> I was with Iris Burton. That was my first agent. Okay. Yeah. okay. Imp impressive. Um, and then Diana and Nora, who managed mm -hmm. Kelly, they became my managers. I started training at Young Actor Space and, and, that really set things in motion and created this momentum of me flying back and forth for a few years, 12 to 15. Um, I would stay with Diane or stay with Nora and stay for the summers. Did you guys ever live at Oakwood? Oh my, yeah, David Oakwood did. apartment. Okay. Yes. I remember visiting you there, David. Yes. I lived there. You're only supposed to live there for like a few weeks. I right. think I lived there for a year and a half. No way. And, and you never yeah. put anything up on the walls. It looked no. the most no, sterile, I, depressing oh. apartment. I didn't unpack, I don't think. He didn't, no, it was like a bag on the floor and oh just like a toothbrush in the bathroom. Like you and never made all... any place feel home <laughs> ever. Even it was a hotel actors. in Arizona. <laughs> Exactly. Wait, this is, this, it was, first of all, it was awful then the plaid couches and, but for some reason, guys, you know, for all your listeners, you know, this was the place that if you did not live there yet, that you would come and it was kind of like a hotel for actors who were yes. in pursuit of their dreams, right? Um, I mean, in Burbank, be Burbank, California, yes. near all near of, Warner the, Brothers, all of right? the studios. Yes. yes. And everyone's there for pilot season <laughs> and everyone's um, auditioning for the same side. It was a very unique I mean, setting. You, you would be at the, oh, it's on Barham, right? Yeah. I remember Barham Boulevard. Yeah. <laughs> and they had alternate locations, Woodland Hills. They got very <laughs> fancy. They expanded. But Bar, the one on Barham was the epic classic one. Um, yep. I, I spent like six weeks. My brother came with a best friend. And anyway, we stayed there for six weeks and that's when it started to kind of build from there. So, um, and anyway, I think now, no joke, I think they have, they still cater to young actors, but it's like a whole business there that you can take acting there. They do your headshots there. I don't oh know. Oh my God. I'm not advertising. Oh, I mean, that makes sense. Like, like, a, like, like, like a, a, like a get started in show business community, right? hundred percent. hundred percent. So uh, then my brother was going off to college. Um, and you know, I was starting to fly back and forth so much that we just, it was an, it was inevitable. And, and that I was, like I said, going to be gone after graduating. Um, and so my parents just said, you know, maybe we should do it now when, so he was going off and then I was flying back and forth. So it really, it felt like the right time. Um, my dad had to take the bar and start over. Wow. He was a successful lawyer in Michigan and we Wait, had to your dad gave up a law practice in Michigan and had to retake the bar in California to support your acting career. That's well, unbelievable. But you know, they are, they are incredible, incredible really? parents, like be, beyond, beyond belief, loving. And if for both of us, my brother also, he, he went to medical school and now he's a doctor at Cedars. Like they, they really supported both of, both of our dreams. Um, How incredible. Very, very beautiful. beautiful. Yeah, they're, they're incredible people, but I think they were also ready for their own adventure. Like they had, they were born and raised in Michigan. And uh. I, I think they decided also, let's do this. When else? If not now, when? Right. And mm -hmm. both, both kids, you know, then J Jason was going to ultimately move here. So it was a family decision and we went for it. And then we moved to Calabasas, which is not the Calabasas we all know now. <laughs> exactly. It was like not desert the Kardashian it was kind of, not, <laughs> not rural, but right. it was suburban. Yet, yeah. Uh, yeah. Not slick. At all. Yes. Um, and one step outside of it all. you right. Exactly. You know, a little bit of a drive. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, my car <laughs> was, you'll appreciate this, Christine. It was Fred Siegel on wheels because I had to, <laughs> if, like when I, you, for, for your listeners, I would have to, it was like 45 minutes 
from anything that had anything to do with the industry. You had your your Thomas guide. <laughs> oh my, right? <laughs> yep. For the for the newbies moving here, like we we pounded the pavement. Okay, it just Thomas guide alone. You ha- it was like a grid, right? It was like oh, Studio yes. City. A Jerry's Deli in Studio City, which was like the classic <laughs> deli. A4, right? And how I I, I don't know how I did it. I don't right. know. And, I know. and now I can't go anywhere without my ways. Even oh, if I no. know where I'm going, I still need it. No, no. I have the worst sense of direction, guys. I, I mean, I take good direction on set. <laughs> right. but I sense it without ways, forget it. But do you remember there was Thomas Guide, you'd have to pull over. Find pull over. Page. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, was, it was a map for dummies. So you just had to <laughs> sort of pull over. And say, <laughs> which it's street am I going in. down? Yeah. It made us resourceful, though. No, it did. It right? did. I was sweating every time I had my <laughs> Like, I, I made sure I, you know, padded the timing because I knew I, no matter what, I was going to get lost and have to figure it out with the Thomas So guide. you just kept multiple, you kept outfit changes in oh, your yeah, car. Because I never knew if if I was going up for like the preppy, whatever, I had to have that in the car. If I was, <laughs> if it was like the, the hooker, the young, you know, like that was in the car. If it was the, there were so many, you know, I had to have everything ready and change in bathrooms of restaurants and, and just it had to be ready. Um, there was a, there was a gym that, was kind of classic. Did you guys ever go to Sports Club LA in the 90s? Yep. Yes. I didn't belong, but I would go as a guest. (laughs) It was expensive, right? It was expensive. (laughs) I came in here so... (laughs) (laughs) I wasn't going to pay that, but... No? Wait. No, I belong to Equinox now, though, I will say. Okay, okay. (laughs) All right. You you reclaimed reclaimed it. I Um, reclaimed it, yeah. Well, I was a member, but I think I became a member once I got a show. Right. It wasn't until I got saved by the bell that I was able to be a member and right. getting the paycheck weekly. Um, I, I felt that pride in being able to get that membership. But that became the place where I would, um, you know, get ready because we would get appointments spontaneously. And then you had to work on sides and get them faxed and memorize. And so Calabasas, I, it was kind of like that's where I started the day and ended the day. But everything in between was either filming or driving around to different auditions all around town and being ready for anything. Right. And sports club LA was like, you're it, like a, like a home. You could was. shower. You they could... had a restaurant in that gym. Like yeah. you know, they had, Oh, they had a hair salon. So Christine, you'll, you'll appreciate this. <laughs> like with curly, cause you have naturally curly hair too. But... <laughs> I'm straight hair. But oh, you she just <laughs> outed you. I No, I'm naturally straight. Hair. <laughs> you do? I always but wanted I, curly hair. Yeah, I'm yes. picturing you in like an orange scrunchie. Yeah, with because it was so 90s and all I did was hot roller my hair because I wanted curly oh, hair. Yes. Okay. I thought you were one of the, you know, okay. Um, my hair is actually still. I still want to be. Yes. Four hours. Anyway, well, I thought, I thought, okay. <laughs> well, anyway, it was, do I go with straight hair? Do I go with curly hair? Was often the big question of the day. Like, just sure. Right? <laughs> of what, what would be best for that particular casting. Um, did I jump ahead, way ahead from the movie? No, let's bring us to the uh, Saved by the Bell audition because, oh. I, I, that, I mean, it's a, literally a cultural phenomenon. I, I don't, you obviously didn't know at the time, but how did that come, come about? Um, well, I had, so I had done a few guest spots on like Silver Spoons. Oh, the it's best. Ricky Schroeder. So oh my cool. gosh. I, guys, I had one line. Okay. It was, <laughs> um, it was an episode where Ricky... Rick at the time. He was now Rick in the 90s. Oh, Rick Schroeder, right. Yeah, where he had a guest house and a party in the guest house. And I had one line, hi, Rick, nice place. And you know, I don't even know. The line did, did, reading, too. The line reading. Did you reading. nail it? I did, but I'm not going to lie. When you have one line in something, it's almost more nerve wracking because you're like waiting for you. You're waiting for you. You're like internal. And you overthink like, how to say it, how yeah. to say it in your head, the one line. A hundred percent. So it was like, hi, Rick. Nice place. Or hi, Rick. Pause. Ellipses. Right. Right. I mean, I. I you had a hundred different ways. I did. And I just was hoping it would come out in some way that made sense. Um, so, yeah. So I was starting to build the resume like you know, an episode here, an episode there. I did a show called Give Me a Break with jo- Joey Lawrence you guys have had on. Oh, so great. Give me a break. Um, that was such a yeah. great 80s he, he show. He talked right? a lot about that. Yeah, yeah that, that was, was a big thing. First, 
yeah, that was my first show. And I sang on that show. Um, I played an orphan anyway. Um, yeah, so it was starting to build and then pilot season, which, um, which is that time of year. It's different now because there's streaming services and, you know, shows are being developed at all different times, as you guys know, but for anyone listening that doesn't know it, it used to be just a certain time, February, was it like January, February, yeah, January through mm-hmm. April. Right. And everyone mm-hmm. would find out if the show got picked up by May. May. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. And then you would shoot the pilot for a potential show in this time. If you were lucky enough to get one right. after testing at the network, uh, however many times, but so one of, one of my, you know, auditions during that time of pilot season was Saved by the Bell. And it was kind of a strange one, though, because when was your show that you guys did together? Because w- when did it air? Was It was on cable or? It was on Nickelodeon yes. um, from 1989 to 1991. Okay. Yeah. And like what day did it air or what time? Because it was a unique thing for us that we were Saturday morning. I mean, our Right. That was a new thing, right? Like, Yeah. We were up against the chipmunks, like oh animated, God. okay? <laughs> or like, I think wrestling or something was or definitely sports came after us. But this was a new thing. Like, what do you mean? It's a Saturday morning, not primetime show, which is the thing we all wanted. Right. 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 And it wasn't oh. it. And and everybody always remembers Saturday morning cartoons. Right. The exactly. animated shows, all the kids animated shows. But oh. but a, but a live action <laughs> right. <It was laughs> situation like, oh. comedy. <laughs> exactly. And so we all, we were all a bit like, what is this? Um, previous, like the first incarnation of the show was called Good Morning, Miss Bliss. And only Mark Paul, Lark and Dustin did that show with Haley Mills. And then they they redeveloped it for this Saturday morning. Brandon Tartikoff was a huge part of, you know, really, I mean, he was incredible. He was the head of NBC right. and mm-hmm. beloved and just such a, an incredible man. Um, but he really loved the show, but he wanted to rework it and then create this new time for live action. So it was an audition we had. I remember for the final callback, the test, Mario was in the hallway um, and we said hello, and there was just that fun chemistry. You know, it's it's hard to think back to those moments when you first met the person that you have this history with now. Right. To, to sure, it was so innocent. We were both. He was coming off a show called um, with Fergie called Kids Incorporated. It was like a oh, dance. I remember oh Kids gosh. Incorporated. I, I remember the that song. Show. The song right. Kids, Kids Incorporated. Okay. Oh uh, my god! I yeah. didn't know Mario was on that show. He was the drummer, little drummer boy. And- <laughs> <laughs> so oh, we should have brought that up with him. Yes. Oh, I, and I, oh, when did you talk to him? I love that. We were just we were on his radio show. Yes, little, he interviewed us for oh, the press. Yeah. Well, he when he comes on here, just remind him about his perm. Okay. <laughs> oh. <laughs> he did have a perm and a mullet. Um, so I went. I met him, and he was so sweet. We just kind of smiled. We it's it's. A very clear moment to me, though. Um, and then Tiffany and I were up for the same role. There was the role of Jesse wasn't in the mix, and so she and I were both vying for Kelly. Um, and then Brandon, who I said I loved, um, he said, "You know what? They couldn't decide between the two of us." And so then Jesse became a thing, Jesse Spano. And so we we so stopped- they wrote a part in for you because they loved you. They did. It. Oh, that's they, an that's incredible, amazing compliment. <laughs> They did. And we, I mean, and what was so crazy, you guys, is we only did seven episodes at first. It was not like the normal pickup of a show that's like 22 or now nowadays it's, you could have 10, 13. But at that time, you either got yeah. a full season or you didn't. And so it was, again, it was, we probably had more rap parties than any show because <laughs> we just never knew. Um, I don't know what the metrics were at the time, like the Nielsen ratings or how they found out you know, that this was in fact a success, but so we did seven, then we did 13 and then we'd keep coming back, but there would be a break in between. And we did school on set. Did you, did you tutor with us, Christine, in our schoolroom? No, because I had graduated. I had, okay. ju- I think I'm a year older. So I had okay. just finished and was, um, had finished that on our set. Okay. Yes. Okay. Cause we had, we had to do three hours a day of school. Um, and we had a schoolroom set up with a tutor, an amazing tutor, Sydney Sharon, 
who actually wrote the algebra to algebra to trig book that I used at Calabasas High. So I was feeling like, okay, you know, um, (laughs) but because our seasons weren't like a nine month shooting schedule, there was a lot of going back and forth into regular school and then coming back to set. So it was disjointed, but it was actually a great dose of real life and that consistency, which for me, I think um, was a really good thing. I was grateful to have the normalcy, though I I did other jobs in between as well. But um, we did. We did this show. We had no idea, David, you were asking, like, you you were mentioning about just what a pop, like, yeah, you, you a, couldn't a, have an idea that what culture. it would become. Yeah. No, we never knew. We knew that people liked it. We knew that, you know, every Friday night we had um, a live taping with a studio audience. It was like a pep rally of kids. And we were really close. We were really, we were 15 when we started. So Our group, I mean, we all got our driver's licenses together. We all got our, you know, we were talking about different rites of passages as women, but as kids, we actually shared those together. We became famous together. Our dreams were coming true together. We, yeah, each of us bought our own first car and um, our parents were on set. So we always felt like someone was looking out for us in a really special way. I Um, remember when I did my episode, you were all so nice because we we always we talk about you guest star on something and you never know what that you always feel a little bit oh. like an outsider and what that totally. and or you want to give every and you know as a teenager it's sort of like I want they, they're a group I want to give them their space but you guys were <laughs> I remember you invited me to come to lunch with you at the oh, place right across the it, it, no it's like there was like a restaurant in the in the um, mini mall like right across the street I, it's still there that place I feel like but where did I, you shoot we say about sunset I, Gower, right? Well, I, I was just trying Sunset to say Gower. Oh, we yeah. shot Blossom there. At first at NBC, but I think when Christine came, we moved around a bit. Um, Raleigh and Sunset Gower. Oh, yeah. did, so did, I, did you and I go to that really nice restaurant right there in that strip mall? It, it, yeah, it was it was a nice, fairly nice kind of restaurant. Like grown up of us. Very <laughs> it grown was up grown up. Us. But I well, think I think maybe your mom came and I think Tiffany and her mom came. Like it was this nice little group and I you so generously included me and I felt so cool. I was oh like God. I really feel oh like God. I'm you know, it was so much fun. <laughs> it was I, so sweet. I love that these are part of your memories because it makes me happy to know that we I I mean, look, even as adults now, I don't know when when you guys will go do someone else's show, you still feel that first day of school kind of jitters feeling, especially if it's a well-oiled machine and there's a you're stepping into someone else's um routine. And, and absolutely. It, and especially at, at the age of I mean, being a teenager, it was different than other shows like kids were 25 playing 15, or like that was a big thing then, you know, that that but it was unique to our show and to your show, like that we actually were pretty much the age we were all playing, which was unique. It's, yeah, yeah. It's scary. It's like starting a new school, but like as an exchange student that's only there for a week. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> it's a scary thing that first day, the yeah, table it, read. You're to- yeah. Oh, God. And people sometimes can get fired after the, after the table read. We had some actors that came yep. in. You're still being judged. And there are people from the network. and you read that out loud and you better nail it the way you did at the audition. I mean, it's, it, it's a lot to take on as a kid, you know, you are working as a grown up, So the expectation is no different, especially at that age. It's not like kids who are five and, you know, obviously there's a different expectation, but Mark Paul says this often, like when we, when we talk that we really, I mean, we had the expectation of delivering no different, no, it's no different than an adult. And um, that's right. That's right. Exactly right. So yeah. you have to have that work ethic. You have to have that. Right. You learn work ethic for sure. Yeah. And and I learned that from dance. And that has always kind of been the foundation for me, that kind of drive and discipline and work ethic that even if I'm not using literal dance in a project like theater or something, I I just have that foundation, which I think is good for everything. Um, so you look back on the whole show and that time in your life as a, a great experience. I do. Yeah. I really do. I, I f- think we felt safe. We felt, um, we felt. And balanced. Yeah. Right? It was balanced family, and- school, set, work. Yeah. Friends. I mean, we, you know, and we like a family, like we would get into 
little arguments here and there. We, but like brothers and sisters, seriously, it was like siblings. It, it, and, and it got, you know, we got over it in a second. We would, after tape night, we would go to Ed DeBevick's, which was this 50s diner. <laughs> oh, my God. Is that in Pulp Fiction? <laughs> yeah, that, yes. Yes. It, yeah. is. it is. So that was our Friday night. It was it, honestly so innocent. And then as we got older and we did the Beach Club episodes, which felt like really mature, um, <laughs> I think people were starting to kind of go out a little bit, things like that. But it, so it felt like very grown up. But it really we were still protected in in this kind of insular bubble and obviously no paparazzi and all of those things again that like teenagers now have to have um, teen stars now have to deal with and the truth is the the impact of the show and the and the wild success of it like the multi-generational kind of like love for this show which is so beautiful I mean people will come up to us and um often what we hear is like you're my childhood and what a special right. thing to be a part of someone's actual childhood, whether they were like, I hear stories of someone who's like a latchkey kid and would c- come home and there we would be. Or, right. or um, then when it went into syndication, it was every morning for kids. Um, so it started Saturday morning, but then became like, honestly, for a few generations now, like it was their after school thing, then their before school thing. And now you can pretty much find it anywhere and everywhere. Anywhere. You can't yeah, escape. Christine and I talk about oh, uh, you know the the fans of of Saved by the Bell, the fans that we we find about uh, with Hey Dude. Yeah, um, you know they didn't have we 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 we've spoken about this. They didn't have social media. They didn't have Snapchat and TikTok and all these distractions. Right. And there wasn't a lot of programming for kids. There wasn't a million channels. So like this, w- they they owned this. They owned Saved by the Bell. It was their thing. It wasn't a grown up thing. Yes. And yeah. they have this attachment to it. Uh, Definitely. That- and 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 that still now, like generations, you know, the, the most we did where we would kind of see what impact it was having was going to a mall signing at the time. Like right. innocent kind of like. You know, you know, like that singer Tiffany would do not to be, you know, not Tiffany Thiessen, but like the singer Tiffany. Yes. Yes. So people like that's how you kind of could measure how it was doing in, you know, firsthand. But then, you know, we did like 100 episodes and. And that was over how many years? We did. 89, like you, it's very similar, 89 to like. 93, I think. Mm-hmm. And did you leave the show early before it was? Yeah, you, so you left on your own. So odd, like perfect, like 90s sitcom fashion. Tiffany and I both decided to leave after the characters graduated. Like it was time. We felt like it's time. Right. And then there was a new character of Tori that came in. Um, they well, never they tried, they tried to replace guys, you. Never explained where we went. She was like a <laughs> morph of the two of us, you know? Um, oh, she actually, I'm wearing a leather jacket. She, they put a leather jacket on Tori. So she was kind of tough. And then she had the curly hair and then had like Tiffany's bangs. Like it was, and they just never mentioned where we went. So they did some more episodes after we graduated. Tiffany went off. Oh my gosh. Did she do 90210 right then? I think she joined 90210 or she took a break to try to explore other things and then did the college years and then 90210. I'm not sure her timeline of that, but we just, I was ready for more. I wanted to do other things. Um, and I was so grateful. Oh my God. Like, it's not like we turned our backs on the show. It wasn't like that. It was just, it was the natural time. And we didn't know if it was going to get picked up. And we just said, it, let's go. Let, Tiffany and I both wanted to check out other things. And and then they did end up doing just a few more. So mm-hmm. it's so great to be able to make that decision on your own rather than, you know, get the call. Yes. The show's being canceled. That's like, oh. you know, gut wrenching. But so you, you. Oh, you, and by the way, sometimes you don't even get that call. Like even now. <laughs> oh, you read it? I have oh, God. read it in the trades. I'm like, how does that happen? You know, where here you just worked with people and created something yeah. that you care about. And suddenly you're like, oh, OK, I guess we're not going back based on <laughs> headline or variety you know right it's all dismantled it's all gone everything that was there get, is gone. humanity within that yeah you know you get thick skin after a you while do. but you're so but right so 
we, you and know, that's we, the key to not be bitter is, is to really, you know, to have that strength. And then you need the duality of that and the vulnerability to be good at the work, but you've got it. You know, it's like, then I did showgirls after that, like two years later. Right. So that, that, that was like the most coveted role for a young actress, right? I mean, it was, it was uh, at the time. Who was the director? Was it Paul, um, Paul Verhoeven? Basic Instinct, right? Uh, yeah. He had just made Sharon Stone the biggest star in the world in Basic Instinct. Yeah. Right. Everybody wanted that role and you got it. And I, I, let me just preface this by saying we, we've spoken to uh, our, our other guests, specifically Ben Stiller, who has said that he's done a lot of his movies did not do well when they first came out, whether it's Zoolander or The Cable Guy. And somehow, oh. 10 years later... They're really? like appreciated. Mm-hmm. And I know Showgirls is now like a cult hit. But at the time, wh- what an amazing experience. And then like it must have been frustrating, right? It was. It was so. Yeah. First of all, it is wild. I didn't know that about Ben's movies. Yes. Oh, at yes. All. I didn't realize that. <laughs> Zoolander did not do well at all. It was, it came out right after 9-11 and people, you know, the idea was let's put something out that people can sort of escapism and go to the theaters and laugh and, you know, community and it backfired. (laughs) Nobody And Cable Guy too, right? Cable Guy also. Yes, exactly. So there's a lot of those, but yeah. It's so wild to me. I I had no idea. Um, Yeah. I, you know, obviously, like you said, a, a lot of girls and a lot of girls we know with big na- big names at the time. And remember, so it's important. And you're tw- what, how, are, how old are you? Here? I was 22. 20, no, I, I was 21. Okay. Oh my goodness. Wow. Um, yeah. 21. And everyone and their mother wanted it unless, unless there was an aspect to it that they weren't comfortable with, which is possible. Like, it was on the page, what was expected in this role. And so maybe some people were not comfortable with it. And I get that. Um, But there were a lot of very well-known people at the time. And even though, like we've been talking about Saved by the Bell is this kind of mainstay in pop culture at that time, it was still kind of like not really fully on the radar where I was, I wasn't like known. And especially at that time, you stayed in your lane. You're either a TV person, film person, or Right. Oh, but what what That's a right. pivot from a Saturday morning <laughs> kids show to showgirls. I Listen, mean, David, I don't <laughs> like to do things in a low key way. I no, love um, it. I love but, the risk. But, that, but I, I need to tell you, though, like this was it was not like my plan. Like there wasn't some grand plan of like, let me show them another side. Right, right. There wasn't that mission I was on. It was just looking for great work. And working with great filmmakers and my my vision, though, that was clear to me is I really wanted to do films. And that's what I had really trained in and uh, tra- trained for. I really wanted that. And this was one of the first big ones that came up. And there were a lot of prerequisites around the role itself. They needed someone who could act, who could physically pass as a showgirl, who could dance, who could hide dance training 17 lessons a week. From- exactly. Right. Check, um, check, check. Um, yeah. Each thing just felt like, oh my God. And my agent at the time said, there's no way you're going to get this. They're going to go with a huge name. And I, I don't know, you know, you just, when you get a sense about something, I just had this vision of like, if I could just get in the room, I think I'm going to get this. Like it was it not a conceited thing, not a, an entitled thing. It was very like, I don't know. I, it was a visceral connection to this part. Well, the- yeah. I mean, those boxes, you, <laughs> exactly what you said. It's very rare when something comes along and those you can you can honestly say I can check every one of those boxes. Yes. So this is a great opportunity, whether I get it or not. It's, but I know I can go in and and, I need and kill it. I can kill it. Yes, exactly, exactly. And um, so finally, uh, Joanna Ray brought me in, um, and I did my thing. And you know, I. I just remember the tape they taped that my sound did not come out somehow. So they had to have me back quickly to then come back in and do it again. And um, I know, I know now that the director had kind of made his decision that day, but I still, I had to jump through like, I guess a lot of hoops. I think I had four more callbacks because it was MGM and uh, I had a dance audition and 
there was so, and then a chemistry, re- there, there was a, a lot to it. It was, yeah, it was probably. Did you have to do a, a, a an official screen test in that um, old you know, school sense? In that old school sense? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. And then once I got cast, I then did that with other people for the other roles, like Gina and Kyle and. Got it. Got different it. Different actors um, and Glenn Plummer. Yeah. And. It was, this is, it's fun kind of talking about with you guys, because I haven't really thought of the process or the journey of the getting it. So it's kind of fun to just think back with you in a fresh way, but. um, And the filming of it too. I mean, Christine and I have also talked about that. Forget about what the world thinks about it. Exactly. You have the the experience, the friendship, right, Christine? Ben (laughs) talked about that as well. And Jeff Bridges. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, yeah, yeah, there's, you're right. There's the journey of getting it. There's the journey of the doing of it that no one can take that away from you, right? Right. Like, that experience, that's personal, that's in your heart. That's the blood, sweat and tears that yes. went into making it, right? Oh my God. And the, trust me, like this was seven days a week for six months or, or even more. Um, and there was nowhere, honestly, during the making of it, there was nowhere I would have rather have been. As a young girl and a young woman in Hollywood, just that emotional journey for a girl. You know, I run a foundation and have since 2006 for adolescent girls. It's a self-esteem program. And I have no doubt that facilitating that has been a heart and soul mission of mine. It's called Ask Elizabeth. It's Um, incredible, which we want to talk about, too. too. Thank you. Yeah, sorry. I don't mean to to get too far. No, 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 please. When I'm, I'm... thinking and considering this in the moment with you just going, I I have no doubt that probably some things that I went through at that time that I had to um, fight for or stand in, no doubt my mission later when I would create it in 2006 was something that was so important to me because a lot of my, my learning was hard earned. Ultimately the creative, and, and that's what I take away from the thing of what we did, the creative I just was in heaven, especially the dance. The dancing was something that, uh, you know, for me, was like a dream. Um, well, you're dancing in that film. I It is off the charts. And I, you know, n- not knowing you, uh, knowing you were a dancer and that you had to have training, but not ever having seen anything, what you did in that film. I mean, first of all, like the how you could physically even right not many actresses could have even done that right i don't know how we like i have a lot of um dancer friends that i trained with at professional studios here that were also cast in the movie like in the chorus and were such an integral part to those numbers and we would look at each other at 2 a.m like another take another this was you know it's not broadway where you do i mean which is hard enough eight shows a week i've done a lot of broadway and london theater and you but you have that two hours to tell the story. This is an 18 hour day, take after take. But I swear to you, that part was the joy. Um, I think the part that was hard in the acting piece of, of this particular project is that I didn't realize we were we were directed in such an over the top fashion. Like the director, Paul, was so clear on his vision. And <clears throat> it's not really the way you know, in any of my screen tests, it it wasn't really the way I was acting. So it was new for me that, oh, okay, we're going to shift. He's got this more over the top vision for what Vegas is, his commentary on this world, the underbelly of Vegas and, and the US, you know, he's a Dutch filmmaker. And a lot of his movies are really provocative and in your face. And, you know, I'm not, um, I'm not, a victim here to anything. I mean, it, it was communicated. It just was very different. And it's also p- ironically part of, I think, why it has reached this cult status because everything is that kind of fun, heightened um, from the aesthetic to the makeup to the, I mean, that world is over the top. So it's so over, over the top. I mean, right? it, felt, like, it felt very deliberate. It felt yeah. very, you know, and that and was, it was, it was from him, but then how they promoted it was not. So there was this weird disconnect. They, they promoted it more like basic instinct when in fact they should have just at the time promoted it for what it is. And right. yeah. So and it, it got that rating, right? Which it did. It hurt the whole thing. Uh, you know, yeah. they could have 
they could have cut some stuff out and made it yeah. a rated R. Exactly. Exactly. But he was clear. Like that was his, he was clear. Um, when the movie came out and it was highly criticized, um, and there were very, very personal attacks, you know, from whether it be Time Magazine, New York Times, you know, you name it. It was a very strange time because you do, you know, when you're working and you're so close with the people you're making the, the thing with that you're collaborating with. When it came out, those people were gone. And I was left to defend myself when I didn't make this movie on my own. And so it was it was very strange and unfortunate because I didn't have the history of multiple movies to back me up. You know, I just had the kitchen. There was no muscle memory of of having even been through this before. So to oh. to reconcile what we did and now how do I why am I defending what we did and we said, you well, know, and, I mean and the, that must have been hard. And not just the muscle memory, but I hadn't really seen that happen to another young actor ever. Like I I really had and again, I am not some victim or, you know, I am an empowered human, sure. but I've never seen someone to even go, Oh, could I reach out to so-and-so like the filmmakers themselves were nowhere. And so to even defend it. So I went around the world with the film because I didn't bail on the world tour. I, other people did. And I went myself to every major territory and um, promoted it because I thought, well, at least they'll meet me. And, you know, Christine, at that point, you had known me a few years. I wasn't the character I played. I was very different. I'm an actress. <laughs> and so I thought, well, maybe if they could meet me in person, also if I deliver to these financers and, and um, anyway, so I went all over the world with it and yeah, there was a lot of fallout. There was, you know, I got dropped by agency and manager and, and I just, honestly, I was, what? Sad. are you serious? Oh yeah. Yeah. They wouldn't No, I would, it was, I couldn't even audition for anything. Oh no one would see gosh. me. Gosh. And I then, had no idea. That's ridiculous to blame oh, yeah. the actress for. Uh, oh my gosh! Exactly, exactly. And so that's where um, I was like, okay, what what do I do? Because I've worked my whole life for this, and in one fell swoop, like it's just being pulled away. It was very, it was devastating. And the, but at the same time, I was like, I just need to do my work for people. How do I do this? Um, Sherry Lansing was a. a a mentor of sorts. And I reached out to her and I just sat with her. I remember saying, can I just come talk with you? And my next role, but it took a few years to even land something again. Um, I was able to audition, which is so crazy to say that able to, you know what I mean? It was my life's work. And suddenly, um, but first wives club was the next thing I got, which was incredible to work with Goldie oh, Bett, and Diane. All those great yeah. powerhouse women, right? Yeah. <laughs> oh, women. It was like, thank you, God, for putting me in right. this situation. Mm -hmm. First of all, it was comedic. Um, Christine, I know you're a phenomenal comedic actress. So you know that like the freedom of doing comedy with other women is oh it's, it's such a there's gift. nothing better yes nothing better and to really laugh and and with these women that i'm sure you okay. had admired and grew up watching and yeah it's and they such had, a good movie and, and god knows they had been through every high and low of the industry by that point of their lives so it was right where i needed to be it was the perfect next step right. what a great time. way to say i'm still here and <laughs> i'm with goldie and diane yes. keaton <laughs> and everybody go yep. yourself <laughs> Exactly. I love you, David. I love it. I love it. David, where were you then? I would have loved for you. But that's all. I really just wanted at that time, like I wanted, I wished someone who was in a position that would be heard would have stood up. Even another woman like to speak up and say enough, enough right. with being the bully on the playground to this young woman, like enough. And yeah, where was your um? Where was where's Jamie Lee Curtis right then? Because you we you probably didn't know her back then. But if if you did, if you she did, she would have been the one. She would have right? kicked some ass. That's for you. what oh, I'm, I'm thinking of. I'm thinking of Jamie Lee right now oh. and saying enough, people. Like I can just picture oh, her stopping. I would have. I would have loved that. And then at the same time, guys, you know, we all go through highs and lows in life, and maybe I don't know it it made me so strong. It made me grow up so fast. It made me so strong. And mainly I decided to not ever be bitter or angry. Like it was like, get, move forward, keep doing what I love. Don't let it stop me. And 
And um, yeah, so it, it's it, so well, true. Well, like I mean, you said, you cho- you you made the decision, you made the choice for you that you were not going to be a victim, and you were not going anywhere. Exactly. You are, you're, you've earned your place here. You've worked your tush off, and yeah. I'm 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 here. So. Yeah. I will and fight I, my way in to get into those rooms. And God, that is and, so and powerful. Got, thank you. Thank you. And I got so clear then that even if the next few things would be smaller roles, I was like, it just helped me define instead of maybe you guys remember that feeling of like, I just want to work. Instead, of I, after that, my criteria and and the defining of what was most important, like to do after that, then I worked with Al Pacino in any given Sunday. And so it was like collecting these gems of experiences to build back. And then, um, and that's when I then started to also do some serious theater. Like I went off to London with Eddie Izzard. We did, um, the Lenny Bruce story. And I remember oh, wow. that. Oh, I, I never got to see it, but I remember when you were, yes, I remember the press about it. I was so oh. excited for you that you were you. taking a completely different path and exploring something totally new, which I mean, I remember the, the press for that. That was, that sounded terrific. And Hurley Burley. I remember yes. when you did that. That was with Ethan Hawke. And then now we're going into the two. Are we allowed to talk about anything? <laughs> yeah, we can bleed into because <laughs> okay, okay. we want to talk about the charity as well. Yes, so, exactly. The one, right? the one. I, I want to talk about Ask Elizabeth, Elizabeth and, okay, and the book, yes, New definitely. York Times bestselling author. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, so yeah, so the, not just wrapping up '90s though. It was it was building back, planting seeds of working with with those that I you know was so grateful to learn from in every way, in every way, and then you know having the just humility and kind of grace to you know take it, but, but overcome it and, and find, find out what I was really made of too. I mean, you don't know until you're tested and all of us, all of us, no one goes unscathed. Mine was very public, but per, whether it's personal or professional, right. life is hard. Yep. These, yeah. You know, the hero's journey, right? There's, there's always going to be something. And so it's, what do you do in those moments? And now I, I know I can handle after that, there was kind of a strength Um, not an arrogance, but just a strength of, wow, there is really not much if someone threw threw this or this at me that I couldn't know how to navigate on a set. So for you, for you to get that grace at 22, 23 years old is you, you were wise beyond your years because that, that would have broken a lot of people. It really would have. Yeah. Um, and yeah. that's yeah. so impressive. Thank you. Thank you. Um, ask Elizabeth, it, you know, you tell us about your work with teenage girls. Um, so in 2006, I was, yeah, I was actually doing a play in New York. I was living in New York. Um, if you were there, Christine, we should have gone for coffee. <laughs> but, <laughs> we weren't I, there yet. It was okay. 2010. So I okay, wasn't, okay. We, we've always been Shifts. missing each other. Okay. Shifts. Okay. Yeah. Um, but we could play sisters in something. So let's talk. Let's uh, talk. You guys really good. <laughs> I'm looking at her. Go, just go. I don't know. There's something we could play sisters for sure. Um, <laughs> I hope you take that as a compliment. I take it as such a compliment. <laughs> For both there? of you. No, what if she's going there going, no, not really, Elizabeth. <laughs> no, I'm looking and saying I just need the dewy skin uh, magic trick oh that you have going on and then we can do it. Yes. Oh my God, please look at you. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so I, I was doing a lot of different kind of charitable things just because I love to be of service in different ways for really well-intentioned organizations. Um like Girl Scouts of the United States or um, Step Up Women's Network. There were a lot of great female yeah. driven oh, in Girls Inc. There were a lot of organizations where there were great kind of opportunities to do red carpet kind of support for organizations, but nothing really like on the ground with the girls. And I found myself really fulfilled by the idea of being of service in a deeper way for girls and, and beyond raising awareness for a charity that was already, you know, off and running. And so 
I had done a movie with um, Jesse Eisenberg in New York called um, Roger Dodger that had had it had won Tribeca, um, and we then had to stay for some promotional stuff. And his sister ran this acting studio there, and I said to her. I know this sounds crazy, but I secretly created this two hour interactive workshop and I've got it on paper. I just haven't brought it to life. It's like a writer, you know, writing a script and they just want to hear the table read or hear it out loud. I said, would you let me offer this to your girls um, and just see, see if it works. If it doesn't, I'll never do it again. And then she said, yeah, come do it one day. And so I, it was 20 girls and it was, there was a real structure to it. And then there was kind of some improvisation in, in the middle too, of just kind of seeing, letting, letting the girls take it to some new magical place. Um, but it was very contained so that they felt safe and it was girl talk and not me at a podium telling them how to run their lives, but really providing a safe space for girls to feel heard, know they're not alone and um, to feel connected to each other and learn from each other. That was what I wanted to create. And so that single workshop, I kind of tweaked a little based on their feedback of what worked, what didn't and why. And then we kind of built it from there. And all of a sudden it, it has, it had a life of its own, like school administrators who I had offered it to were telling other administrators. And suddenly I was finding myself on a plane to K Murray, Kentucky with my carry on rolling through with, <laughs> with journals and pens to, to different middle schools and high schools and on their football field in their, libraries in their um auditoriums you name it and you it. would teach them the program and they could then continue it um it was often it was like a one off a one off but okay. then their guidance counselors were there to then help facilitate anything beyond that and um until i had the book which came out and girls participated in the book shared their wis most asked questions wisdom advice and we had experts at that point um, that is when schools started to use it kind of like as a handbook for girls. And, and that was pretty powerful because then it could be something that was more, more consistent for them. But yeah, I would just, I've worked with hundreds of thousands of girls now in all these years, sitting with them cross-legged, like I said, in all these different places, football fields and you name it. And it's, it's been pr pr really profound. Um, during the pandemic, it was almost impossible. We did do Zooms. And for some of the schools that I had done it for previously, but I do miss just that in person, you know, it's different. Getting there, getting, getting in the trenches, rolling your sleeves up and yeah. giving, like you said, providing a safe space. Like that is something that in our generation, you know, we had, luckily we had parents that kept us safe and we could, like, I had that kind of relationship with my family as well, but remember that, but yeah. not as a, as not in, in a collective that was scary, that felt peer pressure was a, such a right. big thing. It, we, there were just, there was just nothing of the kind. And I think to provide a space for girl, it just kids, period, yeah. Gr yeah. girls, boys, but there is, um, you know, for girls to support other girls and to hear hear somebody else going through something that you can identify with and then suddenly you don't feel so alone. I exactly. mean, that's and what it's about. It's just sharing it, you know, just getting it off of your chest. And that's in what you've done is incredible. And I wish, I mean, I, 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 I hope you're continuing. I hope that it's because it is very, very special. Thank you so much. I think, um, well, it's funny because now as a mom, I started this well before I became a mom to a boy. So of course he wants, he wants me to create, you know, uh, ask Elizabeth for boys, which um, I just may well do. We'll see. We'll see what, well, maybe he can help with the curriculum, right? right? He can help with the or have, service. Have Greg represented as ask Greg. Uh, Dave, <laughs> I like, I like your ideas. I, I love that. you. Wouldn't, Gre wouldn't Greggy be good at that? I I, I, we, I, I'm sorry. We, I, yeah, we can't even keep you much longer, but yeah, we, we oh. have, you know, your Liz's husband is a great friend of mine. Your, 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 your husband's cousin is one of my best friends. Oh Dylan. my God. She's Elizabeth, we have Greg's artwork all over. And oh, yeah. yes, I have a lot of Greg's artwork from, do you remember Jana, my old roommate, yes, my best yes, friend? Yes. 
Jana and Greg collaborated when Jana was designing and she would use some of his artwork to show houses. And I remember yes. I, I, I would lo- fo- come look at these houses she was designing. And I was like, I love that. She's like, it's Greg's. He's honestly oh, brilliant, I, I, I brilliant artist. Greg's art still from oh. like, from like that's the late incredible. 90s. Yeah. yeah. No, that's incredible. Now you guys have to wear GL. Yeah. You know, he's a, dis- exactly. a clothing designer, like a huge, very, yeah. very incredible high end clothing designer. Well, yeah. send him my regards because I, I, I honestly us, yes, love him. I, I will. And, and David, I love that you're calling me Liz because most pe- no one really calls me Liz except for you, my brother. No, I love it. You always have. And I don't want you to change it. Okay. It's oh, so cute. I, no. yeah, I've always it's, called you Liz. It's so sweet. And I don't, don't ever change it. Okay. Because it would be weird if you suddenly were like, Elizabeth. Um, right. <laughs> right. Ask Liz is not as... <laughs> <laughs> serious as ask Elizabeth. But I just want to say, I love that you took, you know, when you take um, struggles in your own life um, and turn it into a positive yeah. and, and can help people with it. I mean, there's nothing greater in life. I, I, I agree think. with you. And I think for anyone listening that has maybe not been sure how to take something that they have gone deep in, learned about themselves, um, there's no one that's better or more uniquely qualified to help than someone who has has walked through the fire on something. So, you know, um, it's also, you know, we ended up doing a reboot of Saved by the Bell these last two years mm-hmm. and in producing it and casting new kids. It for me in that role as a producer, I, I mean, I wanted to respect that these kids were going to have their own journey. But I also was fiercely protective of creating a set that allowed them. Obviously, it's a comedy and and a sweet show and all of that. But I, I wanted to make sure that their voices were heard and created a culture around that. So to, I guess, you know, it's it's fear, it's important to me to make sure that that space is there for for those kind of coming up. Yeah, you've been able to 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 pay it forward in that way. And that's yeah. just so, so beautiful. You have such a incredible soul and you are just a light. You really are. This has been, the time has flown by and we oh could God. talk to you. I know. You guys, I, I, we, can't, I feel like we just love you. started. Sorry. We, yeah. <laughs> no, we could talk with well, seriously. We could talk for hours. I, yeah. We love you and, and your, love you guys it, so your much. work and your longevity and your family and everything that you have in your life. Such blessings. And, and we're Thank just you. so happy for you. Thank you. Deserve you. Right, it all. right back at both of you. Yes. I've loved and known you guys a long time and have nothing but respect for your own journeys. And it, it's so much fun to get to do this. So if you ever want a part two, I'm in. Yes. Yes. <laughs> definitely. Or, or when Christine's out, let's do like a in-person. Uh, oh, absolutely. Up. Yes. Let's all have, let's all sit down and I would love, and, it. Uh, I would love see it. each other and give each other a squeeze in person. Thank Definitely. you for joining us. You're love the you best. Guys. Thank you so much, Liz. I'm loving this. <laughs> Bye. 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 Thank you. Amazing. Wow. We really wow. Are. She has so much depth. I said it at the end, just her, her, she's a good soul. She is somebody who has, you know, I mean, I had no idea. I remember the critical, you know, backlash on the, on that movie at the time because it was such a big movie, but I had no idea her, the personal struggle and how alienating that must have been for her. Right. The filmmakers and the producers all left her as the face of the thing. I've never heard anything like that of agents dropping a print. And and again, we're in a very different time. That would never happen today. Oh, this was, yeah, this was way before me too. And uh, yes, the whole, the whole movement, but, uh, but Um, like you said, you know how kind she was to you on the set. And that's, I, I've, I've always known her as like the sweetest, kindest soul. So for the industry you know, and, and entertainment business is rough. Yeah. It's rough. And everyone can turn their back on you in one minute. Yes. For something that's not your fault. Yep. Uh, but she, look, she worked her way back and, uh, you know, has done amazing work since then and has helped others. And she's yeah. awesome. Really, really great interview. And um, yeah, we will have to do a part two or a Saved by the Bell reunion or something, but we have to get her back because she was delightful. Amazing. Um, And it was... Uh, Lovely to see you. 
You too. Have a great rest of your week. Um, and I can't wait to see you next week. Yes. We'll, we'll, we'll save who our guest is. Yeah, as we, that's, we yes, always... that's our new thing. We're saving it. We're <laughs> saving it. We're on one name basis. And David Lasher is on a nickname basis with Elizabeth Berkeley. We learned that. She only has one other person in her life. She said, I oh believe her God. brother I... who calls her Liz. So you are really on do, the end. Do you think she was actually insulted or she no. was just... No, I think she said, like, I, I think when people give someone a nickname that they love and they that is a term of endearment which so i think she really liked it she's like don't I've, change it it yeah, would feel I've weird you can't always change known it. her as liz i don't you know can't change yeah. it 20 years later david I'm that's sorry. true we go for we go far enough back that i can call you it earned it. i don't, I, I don't it. feel bad about it all right christine <laughs> all right, great episode all thank right, you sweetie. everyone for joining us thanks for listening we'll Bye. see you next week thanks for listening make sure to subscribe and give us five stars and please follow us on Instagram at Hey Dude the 90s called. See you next time.